Call of the Nether Deep. First yes, yes. What is Call of the Nether Deep? Call of the Nether Deep is the first kind of officially published D and D adventure within the world of Exandria. Um, so this is an opportunity for us to present a, a narrative adventure for people who are familiar with the world or want, you know, a, a directly ready storyline to present to their their players within the world of Exandria. Uh, and in doing so, it kind of expands the lore, goes more macro into locations and people that flesh out those locations and narrative threads and storylines that can be interacted with that eventually lead along a gradually growing epic story that the players get to guide the direction and the eventual uh, path and resolution that it takes. And uh, this one in particular starts in the continent of Wildmount, which we've uh, already published a, a campaign guide regarding. So while it's not necessary for you to own the Wildmount guide for this, uh, it's a supplementary and kind of fills in some of the spaces if you want it. Um, and then eventually it jumps uh, partway through the story to the continent of Marquette, which is where the current campaign of Critical Role is happening, specifically the city of Ancarel, which was established in Campaign 1 and right. is a fan-beloved location. And you get to explore that and see where the mysteries take you. What is interesting about this project for you? For me, as a creative, it's interesting to do things in our adventures that we haven't done before. It has been a long time since we've had an adventure that really focused on underwater environments. This is interesting because um, th there's a couple of different things about this adventure. Mm -hmm. uh, one of which is there are antagonistic NPCs in it, which I adore and love. Mm. Uh, they're, they're, if, if, if I'm not wrong, they're NPCs that are like moving along as adventurers themselves while you are going through the adventure. They are a competitive rival adventuring party. So the idea of, of you know, every adventure, every story, you are the sole heroes of that is, you know, it's a staple of every adventure. I love the idea of there being a ticking clock because you aren't the only forces seeking these same goals. Mm -hmm. And it's up to these interactions for you to decide how you build the relationships with this rival team. And so this idea of having rivals that you intersect with multiple times and who become more powerful, like you do as the adventure goes on, was a novelty that I enjoyed playing with and I'm sure the writers did as well. Do your interactions leave them still just fun, cheeky rivals that when you occasionally cross paths, you throw quips and maybe a few barbs and go on your way? Does it become a, a truly antagonistic you know, villain team that you're trying to surmount and defeat before you reach your goals? Do you kind of befriend them? Like, I, I, we wanted to make sure that there was uh, a lot of options to craft the, the personalities of these people based on the interactions you have with them and develop the relationship based on that. So, uh, so yeah, it's both a way to drive the story forward and to let the players know that you can't dally too long because other people are working in the world aside from you and also hopefully create some really memorable experiences when you do occasionally bump into these people again and be like, oh no, it's, it's these buggers, all right, well. Let's see how it goes this time. This adventure is really a very character-driven one. There, there isn't a plot that moves along uh, so much as there are characters that want things. and They want them very, very badly. And uh, hopefully the characters that you're playing, your player characters, will want that very same thing very, very badly as well for a lot of different reasons. It's layered, right? Um, Critical Role as a setting is a very layered, character-driven show. And to emulate that in the adventure, you needed rivals who have dimension. And so they have their group goals, of course, but then the individual rivals are pursuing their own goals as well. And so that adds kind of a fun layer. And your relationship with them can change. Depending on your actions as the heroes of the story, uh, they can become either friendly to you, indifferent toward you, or outright hostile toward you. <laughs> I, I like the idea that you can have like multiple interactions with them in different ways. So I, f I feel like those, those two things alone are, are, were quite the incentive to sort of inspire us as we were making our way through this journey to get the book to completion. It really feels like this grand epic adventure that spans across multiple different areas, multiple different continents. It really captures that very classic, uh, almost Tolkien-esque going on a quest and journeying across this very expansive land and seeing all these different kinds of landscapes and putting yourself in these positions that you, uh, at least when you started your adventure, you never pictured yourself being capable of handling and suddenly 
you are fighting demons or diving into this far realm infested space and fighting against jellyfish that can petrify you. And I find that so fascinating and so fun to play as someone, to get into that space of a character who didn't believe or didn't even expect that they could have gotten this far and now they're out saving the world. Pretty big lore deep, deep dive for you know, Matt's world. Yeah, and it's a sort of a peek behind the curtain at things you may have glimpsed or only heard about in Matt's world, um, from the city of Ankarel and Marquette to other fascinating little tidbits. I think one of the things that hooked me right away was this idea of there's a calling. Um, that's why it's called Call of the Netherdeep. Uh, the characters essentially receive a calling from an entity who's been lost to the ages, lost to time. And you don't exactly know right up front what this entity is all about, only that they need help, that they're imprisoned and they need help. And from there, a journey begins, a journey of discovery about what this entity is, what this entity did back in the day in the history of the world of Exandria. And, um, you know, there are decision points to be made along the way as you discover new things. This isn't a, you know, it's, it's not an outright villain and it's not an outright hero. It's something that sort of weaves it all in, in the way that we're accustomed to seeing from Matt's stories, um, where you don't exactly know what's going on until, and the characters have a lot of agency. And I think um, what intrigued me though was this figure around which this story revolves because of the mystery. If you liked this interview and you'd like to see more, go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that little bell symbol so you're notified anytime a video like this comes out. Thank you so much for watching.